Um, separately, we don't we're not far enough along to see about a museum or something like that. But certainly, there's been a long history of doing displays like that, and that's a comment we can take back. Our next speaker is Terry Tippett. Before we move on, Ms. Tippett, can Colleen Mason Heller, Damian Goodman, and Kenneth Simmons please line up at the microphone? Thank you. Hi, tomorrow when you come to my HOA meeting, would you please put sound with that video? Because it's very nice to see the trains, but we hear nothing. So it looks like there's not going to be any noise or anything when the trains are approaching. If that's true, hey, great. Um, we have proven in our comments to the DR that the only option to mitigate the impact library will have on this community is to go underground. You are studying underground along the Crenshaw Corridor. You were able to build two 1.7 mile light rail tunnels along the six mile Gold Line East Side extension under Boyle Heights. And the cost for the entire extension was under a billion dollars, which included 80% 80 80 of federal money. Yet even though we have asked repeatedly to let you study underground this community, you have not because you contend that it is not feasible because of storm drains. You can go under and beside storm drains, but because phase two pulled out the federal environmental process, there's no federal money to help pay for great separation in this three quarter mile stretch of the eight mile corridor. And it affects some of the most congested traffic in LA. For the first time, a lobbyist was hired for a specific project, Expo Light Rail. That money could have been used for great separation. Federal money could have been used for great separation. But you know what? Do not want to come into scrutiny of the Federal Transit Administration. Instead, there's no money to properly mitigate this project. So as we've always said, we're keeping the same position. Build it right or not at all. My name is Colleen Mason Heller. I'm Vice President of Neighbors for Smart Rail and a member of the Chevy Hills Homeowners Association. I have kind of a question. Who exactly do you think is going to pay for the uh, rate, potential rate separation at uh, Sepulveda? You can hold your answer. Secondly, the Santa Monica maintenance yard, the hybrid that you were talking about, uh, the Santa Monica planning department estimated that that hybrid would cost between 100 and 120 million. Um, who's going to pay for that? Who paid for the 1.7 mile tunnels under oil heights? My colleague Terry said the federal government. You have doomed Expo to a chronic underfunding because there is no federal dollars. Great separation could have been funded by, by federal dollars. And for you to say that MTA is monitoring cut through traffic and uh, parking is cold comfort for those of us who've seen your monitoring before. Currently on the gold line, there are still outstanding cases for in inverse condemnation. There are cases that after six years of a court order, you still haven't met the FTA regulations for noise, and you haven't finished the sound walls there. Uh, the blue line is still the deadliest light rail in the, in the country. Are you monitoring that? As landscaping, the most trivial of issues that you managed to screw up, you <laughs> promised after several years of landscape committees on phase one, and you prom had a whole landscape project, and for those of you tree people here, they promised native sycamore trees. Yeah. What are they building instead? MTA did not want to do the maintenance because they need to be pruned, they need to be watered. They're putting in Southeast Asian ginkgo biloba trees that grow to a, not a shade canopy tree, no, 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 one inch a year you can expect to get out of those puppies. So please, <laughs> You know, and by the way, where's the other track? I saw one track going along. There are two tracks, two sets of wires, two trains, every two and a half minutes across three quarters, three, uh, four intersections at grade in three quarters of a mile. You can underground that for the cost of moving the Santa Monica maintenance yard. Maybe I'll, I'll provide um, Are you going to any answers I can remember questions there. Um, in terms of, I think the first one I heard was who would pay for the Sepulveda Great Crossing, Great Separation, excuse me. Um, we're not, we don't know who that would be. Uh, we're just environmentally clearing it in case there is a desire and funding made available by others to do that. So we're not specifying that. The, uh, there was also the, the, the question of why not uh, add federal funding in to do the Great Separation. The, the, the great separation or not uh, at, at any of these great, great 
crossings is not looked at uh, as, as financial, financially feasible or not. The, the test that we do is, is it required based upon the grade crossing policy that I talked about and those environmental considerations, level of service and delay. And only then do we look at the cost of those if both of those indicate, if one or both of those indicate a need for a grade separation. So we don't dismiss a grade separation because it's too expensive. We do the analysis and then if it's required, either find the money and do it or don't do the project. So we don't, we don't say don't do it because there isn't enough money. That's not the way that we have looked at it. With respect to uh, safety, the technology and the techniques and the design techniques uh, that we're proposing are uh, identical to, and in some cases a step above because technology improves over time, the Pasadena Go Line, which is one of the safest rail lines in the country and has a terrific safety record. And we believe that with that kind of good design, uh, that there's no reason why this line wouldn't be the same way. Thank you. Next speaker is Damian Goodman. 